What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Billy Collins. Matt D -D 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 Doj. And this is Magician. And the Jock. Guys, we have Chris Bryant, our good friend in the studio today. What's up, buddy? How y'all doing? Appreciate Welcome you. to our humble abode. Fired up for this one. I know. This is going to be a good one. Mm. Chris Bryant, this one. is the blast from my past. Yeah. Tell I what. guess I'm a blast from his past, too. But I uh, know I had a chance. As you know, I'm the jock, yeah, clearly. Yeah, uh, obviously. Um, and played all kinds of sports coming up. And one of the uh, – never played school basketball, but I always played rec ball. And a big reason why I loved rec so much was had some of the best coaches. Um, and Chris Bryant happened to be one of my coaches. Chris, along with – there's another gentleman, John Stiles, who was big in our lives. And, uh, yeah, you coached me from – I mean, 10, 11 years old, all the way up, probably to, through high school. Because I didn't, uh, I think it was my senior year in high school was the last year I played rec ball. And he was there, he was there that whole time. And, um, you know, you go off to college, you, go, you kind of forget about, you know, I moved on, played college ball, went to the pros. And, you know, you kind of lose touch with just everybody. It's only natural. Then you come back and we kind of reconnected. We were talking just before we started three or four years ago doing some uh, stuff at the Boys and Girls Club in Beaufort. And I was like, Chris, what's up, dude? You know, Solomon, it was like you just pick right up where yeah. you left off. That's a good thing about good friends. You just never – doesn't matter how many years. You just can pick right up and where well, you left it, off. It, it, it's, it's unique because the relationship with a coach is so uh, – it's like a father figure a lot of times, you know, because they're an authority in your life. <laughs> you know, the, you're – I mean, you can talk to that. Being a coach, you know, you want your teammates to like you, but you want them to respect you, too. Like, they're not your buddy-buddy because buddy, you, if they mess up. Yeah, just like your parents, not your friend. Yeah. Your parents, so, so coming back and now being a grown-up myself, it was, a, it was a different dynamic for sure. But, did, man, Did anyways. he ever call you daddy? No. <sighs> oh, my God. He loved it when I called him Big Pop, but <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, Chris also has another interesting side to him as well. Yeah. So yeah. So we're gonna get into you got an amazing backstory, a backstory that was happening the same time I knew you, mm -hmm. that we were connected, which I had no idea about. Tell the folks, you know, who you are, kind of what you got going on, and then we'll dive into. I know some really meaty stuff we want to get into. Well, who I am as a I actually am a licensed preacher. And um to talk about um the story about um my back my back pass and my the stuff that I did, um the kids at the rate was more like a getaway for me. You know, because of the fact that I lived another life nobody knew about. Certain people knew, but you know, the fact of selling drugs and you no know, father figure and just, well I was trying to figure out life for myself, you know, and it's you telling a 13-year-old when it started for me. You grew up in um, Beaufort, right? No, I grew up in uh, Crab Point in Moorhead. Oh, uh, more okay. Right there in Crab Point in the apartments back gotcha. there. And um, my mom moved us from Virginia, a little small town called Kilmoney, Virginia. Kilmoney. Virginia Very boy? Small. Virginia boy. Yeah. yeah. And um, we went to school in Norfolk. To be honest with you, when I, when I tell my story, when I speak to people, don't think that I'm bitter. I'm not upset. I forgive and everything. Myself, others. So I'm fine, but I understand that my past made me who I am today. Yep. Mm -hmm. So as a young kid at 13 years old, I think 12, we was used to our mother leaving, you know, saying going out, having, having a good time, and coming home two days later. Used to that. I was the oldest out of, you know, out of three boys. Was your, was your dad in your life much? Oh, no, no, no father figure at all, ever. Okay. You know, um, all we had was my mom, friends, you know, and they went about too much or nothing anyway. Yeah. You figured it out later on. Oh, these guys didn't have enough, us the best interest at all, you yeah. know, at all. And they probably weren't there all that long either. No. Yeah, I, doubt, I doubt very much they were even thinking about you guys too much. It's no. just like, go. Yeah. Like it's, you're like a dog. Like, yeah, go, take, go away. Take, Get in the backyard. Take go five out. Here's some candy, you know. Yeah. That yeah. type of thing. And this one incident, mom left. And I tried to share it with my brothers, but you know, when they being younger, my middle brother thought, oh, she was only gone for a summer. My younger brother never don't even remember her leaving. For a summer? No. But he thought it was a summer. Mm. She was gone a whole year. <sighs> a whole year. Left us there. And you're what, 13? 13, 13 if I was 13 and my mom left for an entire day, I, we would... <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't know what to do. It would yeah. be the, be so strange. That, an entire year. Okay. No, so, right. so when she shows up, you're just basically just happy to see her. Now, that's a lot they went on. You know, the lights got cut off. I was... 
go in the woods and take the rack, rack out of the oven mm. and go outside in the woods and start a fire and cook on it. Like stuff that I stole from the store, like bologna or something like that, right? Again, I never shared this story with too many people because I don't want nobody to look bad on my mom. I love my mom. No, There's no book on how to raise kids. Of course, you'd be like, okay, she knew better than that. Okay, we get that. Yeah. But we don't know what she was going through to even think that that was right to do that. Mm. Mentally, something had to be going on with her too. Yeah. Again, so at 13, I'm, I'm growing up real, real fast. Cooking bologna, that's like a re- that would be a reality show now. <laughs> like there's all kinds of like Duck Dynasty or stuff. <laughs> What, man, into the wild missed, urban life? You just missed your mark, man. Right now, you'd be a, all over Superstar, TLC like, and yeah. History Channel. But yeah. This was before it was cool. Yeah, before it was cool. Yeah. So we make our journey here in Carter County, okay? Again, three boys. Me and my brother was good at any sport you put in front of us. It can be soccer. It can be it can be anything. Fruitsball, volleyball, just, just whatever it was. Athletes. We was excellent at it. My good, we was excellent at it. So we figured... Okay, this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do. Keep our grades up and be out of here. But this, Did you look at it as kind of like your ticket? Like, hey, I, I've got this ability. Well, for me. There's a lot of really famous guys yeah. on TV making a lot of money playing this child's game I'm really good at. So mm-hmm. maybe in the back well, of your mind. For me, it was for my brothers. It was never, ever about me. Never. Because I'm, I'm, I had, like I said, I had to grow yeah, up. Grow so up. me and my brother, okay, I got to go do this for them. So yeah. what did I do to take care of them? I had to sell drugs. Mm. I didn't see nothing wrong with it because that's all I knew. I mean, if you sit down with your kids and do a certain thing in front of them over and over, and they see it at two, three, four years old, that's what we do. Yeah. I don't know no better. That can't Survival. be wrong. Daddy does it. Yeah, you know, yeah. mama does it. The people around her do it. So it can't be wrong. Yeah, your nature yeah. of your yeah. surroundings, your habitat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So what age? Well, this was around 15. 15, wow. I really got, I ain't going to say good at it, but I figured it out. Yeah, yeah. You were sharpening your blades yeah. at yeah, that yeah. point. Yeah, and then I had a, never was afraid of anything because you can't be afraid if you live in the way I was living. Mm. So I stopped being afraid a long time ago. Normal my kids scared of thunderstorms and all that kind of stuff. Didn't bother me at all because now I got to be a man. Even with my mom home, if things go down, my brothers are scared, so I can't show them I'm scared. Wow. And to this day, my brothers treat me like I'm their father. Yeah. You know how you like to hang out with your brother? Like you and your brother may hang out? Yeah. They wouldn't do that with me because it felt like we're hanging with dad, and dad would be mad if he see me doing this. Mm-hmm. So That's they would never hang around me. Yeah, they love me to death. They'll come by, or oh, we get ready to leave. I, I want to go. Nah, you can't hang with us, man. Nah. Because they just felt weird. Yeah. Like, if they get mad at me right now, they won't call and tell me. You became they that would, authority figure yeah. for them, yeah. They would tell my mother, could you tell Chris, I ain't going to make it. Instead of them texting me or calling me, they're running through my mother. And I'm not saying this to disrespect them at all. It's just the, 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 the respect the, they had for me. Family dynamics, you man. You know what I'm saying? So, doing all that stuff, I I decided, well... I'm going to do this till they get out of high school. I'm going to sell these drugs till they get out of high school. And what was the age difference? Um, that's just three and four years. That's it. And you're the oldest. I'm the oldest. Yeah. But okay. it's a big difference when you got them in middle huge. school when you're in high school. Oh, yeah. 16 so, to 12. I mean, that's yeah. like That's a, that's a big gap. Yeah. yeah. So um, just because um, I'm very proud of these boys now, these men now, because of what I've done, they didn't have to do it. And that's one so thing. So they never got into the oh, no. selling? or I, I don't know. It would have been a bad time for them. Because I wasn't going to mm-hmm. plan that. You know what I'm saying? More than whoop, we'd have, we'd have fought. You know, because I got the man demo. That's the only way I knew how to, was to pick on them and fight them. Yeah. And people look at me and that's mean. No, that's all I knew. So, which, that's very interesting because you didn't have anyone yourself to look up to or or mold yourself after as a father figure. So, you just kind of came up with your own way to fi- mm-hmm. be the father figure to your brothers. And there was, there was older guys, I'm guessing, around in the neighborhood that were... If you wanted to hang out with them, you couldn't be soft. So they taught you real quick, and you're like, all right, well, they're older, they're men. Man, it must be the right way to do it. My, my thing, I was a loner. So, yeah, there were older men around, but I still wouldn't involve myself with them because I'm on the outside looking in like, that's, that's, that hurts. Yeah, yeah. What he's doing, that, <clears throat> that's got to hurt that person. Or I got to figure this out by myself. Yeah, it's wrong, but can't nobody snitch on it. Nobody going to tell on themselves. Yeah. So I didn't want to involve too many people with what I was doing. Mm. So at a young, as a young man, I decided I'm going to have two lives. 
Yeah. I'm going to have these type of friends, and I'm going to have these street friends. And I'm going to try to keep the two separated. And I actually was good at doing that. Yeah. Keeping the two separated. Because the street guys had no clue that I would hang with guys that go to school and plan to go into Yeah, because you were, at the same time, you're, you know, selling drugs, you're doing all this stuff, providing really for the family. You're also excelling in sports. You said you didn't get any trouble in school. Mm-hmm. So Grades are pretty good. Love school, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Never failed out. I love school. I love school. I'm gonna need, most people say, if you're doing it, you must have skipped. Nah. I, lo- I thought I was going to miss something if I went to school. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and nationality was a, kind of a, it kept the eyes off the street if I'm in school. Yeah. If somebody says like something. Hiding in plain Chris, sight. Yeah, we seen Chris doing No, not Chris. Oh, that's magic right there. Yeah, yeah he, he plays on the One basketball. One hand's doing what the other one's yeah. doing. Yeah. He plays on the basketball team. He, do, he don't, not Chris. Yeah. So what people ask, oh, no, not me. You know, okay, he don't talk too much. Cause Man, I was like D.H. Conley out there. I couldn't have sold anything <laughs> out there. Yeah, I was. Yeah, way in Virginia. What are you talking about? But you know, um, so the goal was, hey, I'll start selling. You know, how did how did you first start doing that? I mean, it it, it everything grows into I, something. I stumbled across it. Yeah, I was tired of not eating, hmm. and I said, okay, all right, now I don't know what to do here. And then I just, okay, my mom boyfriend keep coming in the house with the container. So I'm like, I know they ain't smoking that much tobacco, <laughs> you know, because a lot, of, you know. Those yeah. small containers yeah, yeah. that you used to have. Yeah. They come in the house with like 10 of them. I'm like, that's a whole lot of cigarettes. That's got a very distinct odor. Yeah, yeah. Why is it? Wow. <laughs> is there a skunk in here? It yeah. smells lovely. <laughs> and, and, you know, and then you get to the point every time he would come over, the door was locked. But, you know, you got them door, but you can stick the clothes hanger in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I figured one day they The left. worst locks ever. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to figure out what they got, and I'm going to break in this room. Mm. And uh, mom don't beat me if you see this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh I walked in there and I looked under the bed and it was weed and he contained already bagged up individuals, like 10 cans. Back in them days, a 10 bag, mm-hmm. you actually got 10 joints out of it. Wow. And I took five or 10 bags, took it to school and my friends told me what it was and I just started from there, man. Mm. And, and you said like, man, this is... That's $50 to $100 a day. That's a, that's a perfect product because, I mean, it kind of sells itself. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You that's, know, so it's, it's yeah. easy money in a that's sense. That's your classic entrepreneurship right there. Yeah. You know. And yeah, so talk about that, you're, the dynamic, because I think, obviously, you were a coach in my life, so leadership has always been, mm-hmm. you know, I think there are ways you can build your leadership, um, but there's some natural, yeah. you know, you know, natural things. I mean, you were kind of set up to be a leader. The, yeah. old, the it, oldest it, child, no father figure, so you had to fill that void. So you were kind of forced to be a leader. Mm-hmm. And then you go to school where there's a bunch of people that look like Billy and I, who, you know, mom and dad at home, and they see how you carry yourself. I mean, you carried yourself probably a lot differently than the other 14-year-olds. Oh, yeah, a whole lot different. Um, I remember one incident. I had a friend in school, a white guy, and um, he was just... He said, man, there's something strange about you. I said, what do you mean by that? So you don't talk much. You're driving a Rolls Royce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get that Rolex? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> never flashy, though. I was never yeah. flashy. Nobody had, nobody had a clue what I was doing in, in school. And that's the smartest way to do it. Yeah, but yeah. these guys knew that, I, like yourself, knew that I was a leader. That's how you carry yourself. I didn't understand it. You know, I walked this class and walked the hallways, and there's 15 to 20 people following me. Hmm. But I wasn't a people person at all then. I'm like, why are y'all following me? I couldn't even tell you the people name half of them. And they want, if, I, if I stop, they stop. And I, we talked before. Um, I had a friend of mine, and a white guy came up to me and said, "Man, uh, I want to fight your cousin." I'm like, "Why are you asking me?" Because hmm. I was told, you know, before we can fight right here, we had to come to you and ask for permission. I'm going. You gotta go kiss the in ring. In high baby. school, I'm like, I didn't know I had that much power. Wow. And I said, well, what did he do? Well, he was this, and he brought your name. I said, you know what? Since he's doing that, go handle your business. Mm. My cousin came to me later, beat up by this guy. And I said, dude, don't do that. Mm. And he looked at me and started crying like, dude, you, you Chris Bryant. He's like, Chris, is it okay that I got beat up? I'm so sorry. <laughs> he's like, this is getting ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you, I just want to go home. That's right. Yeah, you just you figure that stuff out, man. man what is this that I got? You right. know, And I never had nobody to tell me what that was. You know what I'm saying? Until I got old and I figured that, you know, okay, this is leadership. This is something I can use this for positive. I got to stop all this negative mess and do something positive with it. And that's when I started coaching basketball. I started coaching basketball right in my mid-20s. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. in the early 20s, you know, and I, I, I tried it with a cousin of mine named John Styles, yeah. and I found out I was good at it. I didn't know what I was doing. I just got out there and I said, hey, I can do this, you know, until so I started doing it. And eventually John Styles moves on and I take over, you know, because I, I, I just knew how to relate with, with men. I'm going to say men. I ain't going to say kids. I'm just going to say men, period. Yeah. I'm a great listener, and I know how to survive in this world. Either it's in the streets, in the school boardroom, wherever it is, I know how to survive. It's just put in me. So if shit hits the fan, we can go cook some bologna. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the crawl tan for I make a great bologna in, in, on the grill now. now it, I, it pays to have good friends. Dude, it does. Man. I mean, it really does. <laughs> now, I remember just, I don't know if you remember doing this, but I want to say it was it was a practice, maybe all-star. But you remember Juan Tripp? Yeah. Uh, and okay. Juwan was just one of the fastest guys in the world. Like f- to us young kids, he was like Usain Bolt. Like he's mm-hmm. just the fastest. And uh, you grabbed the ball and you said, Juwan, run that way. And he ran and you threw it and hit the wall way before him. And he said, you, you're basically showing like passing is, is going to be a lot quicker than just giving him the ball and letting him run. I, st- for, I can remember that like it was yesterday. So you would do little things like that, very small words. I don't even think you said it. We all got it. Mm-hmm. You know, how do you do, where do you get that, that natural, I guess, communication skills or? Yeah, that's hard to explain, brother. Um, I think to you, it, just, it was probably it like, this came, is obvious. Just throw the ball yeah, and I'll prove a point. It just came natural. Yeah. Again, it, it's all about survival. Mm-hmm. Okay, what color you are, black or white, is all about survival. And you have it, you you don't. And I believe that the people that do have it, more of us need to share it. And I believe this world wouldn't be so bad off if, if it was. We keep, some of us get stuff and keep it to ourselves. Yeah. I don't want to share it. Let them get their own. I'm living right over here by myself, this gated community, and let them drown over here. When all you got to do is say one word. You know if you do this, that'll work out better. Mm-hmm. And that's all it takes. It's a moment of clarity. Yeah, clarifying yeah. life is. Yeah, yeah that's. What, and I'm, I got. I got six kids. I got one grandkid, and she deserved to have a kid now because she's thirty-two. But how old are you, dude? Good God, fifteen. Man, but, no. <laughs> He's born on a leap year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um. Oh, then he pulls out as a couch, right, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> Mama, don't kill him don't or kill me, him, please. <laughs> oh Lord. Mama, I ain't said a word. Yeah. Six kids though. Well, I got six kids, man, and um I knew that I didn't want to be my father. So when I had my first child, I didn't know what to do. My, this is what my mother did for me. She brings the child to the house. The child was six months old. She calls me to the house. You need to come to the house. I said, All right, mom. I don't think I was a senior in high school. Nobody had a, no clue that I had this child in high school. You're not quitting school. So she brings the child to me at six months old and she hands the baby to me. And leaves. I said, Mom, where you going? She said, you'll figure it out. Yeah. But pampers and milk. I'm like, oh, my God. That's the best teaching I've ever and, and my mom stayed gone all day, dude. You know, everything I did with this child was funny. She didn't have no clue that I didn't know how to change her pamper. Yeah. So everything was funny to her. I got mess everywhere, you know. But I figured it out. And my mama made me watch that child that whole weekend by myself. Man, that'd be another great show. So, it's, it's amazing. Um when you're put in that position, because I was the same way when Jackson, when Allison was pregnant with Jackson, I, I had no desire at all to change a diaper. Like, it was revolting to me. Mm-hmm. But then when you have your own child and they're looking at it and they're completely dependent on you, oh, yeah. you'll, you'll do whatever, you know, oh, yeah. which is kind of what you were forced to do with your brothers. Oh, yeah. um, Responsibility can be scary sometimes. It is, but it's like um, necessity is the mother of invention. So you'll figure, mm-hmm. you'll oh, figure yeah. it out. But you see, so you have six kids, but... Th- Let's talk a little bit about your, because um, I was really interested in your athletics. Um, mm-hmm. I, I knew you were athletic. Um, you were the only black guy on our team, which, <laughs> which was, a, Billy, you should have seen us come up to tournaments, dude. It was like me, Frank Ganey, Wes Horn, wearing our, like, Umbro shorts. <laughs> and Chris is rolling in like, dude, we thought we were the shit, man. And you know what the crazy part is? You may think, like, man, these parents, they never, because at the same time, you were one of the biggest drug dealers in East North Carolina. And in your head, are, are you worried, like, man, what if one little word gets out? These parents aren't going to let me be mm-hmm. around their kids. But our parents, they were like, oh, Chris, did it go? Like, we would ride with them 
all this stuff. So I don't know. And my parents are, they were strict. Yeah, they're, they're, they had us under, but for whatever reason, they were like, no, you're good. You yeah. know? So, but kind of talk about your athletics and then, you know, you played a little bit of college ball. And well, we was, um, basketball was your sport. And, um, I watched, uh, I used to love Tony Dorsett. Yep. For some reason, just love Tony Dorsett. And I love to watch play for people that had a worth ethic. I mm. mean, they stories on how people will be in the snow at the shooting layups. And that's what I started doing. Mm -hmm. I would be 15 years old, and I'd be outside, and it's raining or it's snowing. My mom, boy, get in the house. I'm just, mm. and people are picking. Oh, why are you shooting them layups? It's going to pay off one day. Yeah. You know, they didn't realize what I was doing. You know, so. Because that's it, one thing you had direct control over is yeah. your work ethic. Oh, yeah. I could see why that would speak to you. Like, if it took being in a perfect gym or having the best facilities, it's like, well, there's not shit I can do about that. But Yeah. yeah. I remember um, I had a cousin named Travis Adam, and he saw something in me that I didn't see. He would line us all up, and he would have, like, little practices with us, guys that went to high school, but after we would go to the rec afterwards. And he said, Chris, you're guaranteed to miss the first layup you ever take. Every time you shoot, you're going to miss that first layup. And then I would try to go shoot layup, and I would miss it. He said, why do you allow me to get in your head like that? Mm. You overthink and stuff. All I had to do was say it, and you missed the layup. It's that power of suggestion. And I figure as a young man, I always, somebody say something to you, they can be 10 years younger than me. And they give me a little nugget, man. Ooh, I like that. My, mm. my little girl does it. She'll say stuff, man. Ooh, you need to write that down. Yeah. And I take stuff, like stuff you say to me, you say to me, don't think I'm not listening. I'm, I'm, I'm getting it right here because you might even have, you might even hear me repeat something that you said to me. And I've just been blessed. I like to use the word blessed in that way that when people do something good or say something good, I just receive it. You may not see it five or ten years later down the road, but trust me, I, I heard you. Just let, let, let me do it the way I do it. You know what I'm saying? And maybe sometimes it was a little slow with me because I'm stubborn. And, you know, I didn't trust easy. I'm just really believe, honestly starting to trust people in the last five years to the point where I don't even, even trust my wife at times. And I know she loved me, but still I would just keep stuff to myself. And I, and I, and I preached one time, and, it, and the sermon was, Hey, I'm talking with him right now. It's your wife. Sorry, hold on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, um, <laughs> we're going to take a quick commercial break. Yeah, we're going to take a, about, about 10 minutes. you got to ask here. yourself permission if you can fight me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not fighting nobody, buddy. Um, but no, yeah, that that's, I mean, I could see that. Yeah. I mean, from where you came from, I guess it'd be hard to have yeah. trust. And the, the thing about that was, um, is this, I'm trying not to get a little emotional here, but, um, I'm not mad at nobody or bitter. A lot of times, it's still to this day, don't seem fair. And um, I get to myself, man, I said, man, my kids have so much more if I didn't do this. And I start feeling, and I got to come out of that, man, start feeling sorry for yourself, man. You did a great job, dude. Man, but, but there's sometimes, though, we have a tendency of falling back on that crutch. Yeah. You know, and it's not just you, it's just a lot of people do it. Yeah. But if you look at it and address it, it is a crutch. Because it's, yeah, you can go back and fall back and say, oh, well, I, this happened in my life. This happened in my life. I can't have good things. That's bullshit, you know? And you're proof of that because you're like, okay, I came from this, and now I'm here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm making a difference. And now I'm changing things. And I'm sculpting. And I'm molding people's minds. And I'm getting into points where people are wanting to better themselves. And you did that. And that's not, you didn't fall back on that crutch. You know, it reminds me, we had that um, conversation with David Price. And for him, his dad died when he was like six seven. or seven. Yeah. And he always felt like he was defective or like, I wish mm -hmm. I had a dad. And I said, dude, you know what's, you know, the problem with that excuse is it's a good one. So that's a really good excuse. Your dad died. Like you, you would be justified for the rest of your life by saying, this is why I'm not where I want to be. My dad died. Mm -hmm. And no one's going to be like, you pussy. Like, why are you thinking like that? Same thing with you. It's like, man, I was cooking bologna outside. You know, I had to mm -hmm. sell drugs to take care of my, my mom. We thought, 
And my brother thought she was gone for a summer, which means you both yeah. looked at each other and you're like, no, it was actually a year. So you're you're like, you have. Good Lord. You have. We thought a summer was a long time. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. You have a, like, you don't have baggage. I mean, you've got cargo worth of excuses, really, really good ones yeah. that the outside world's not going to condemn you for saying, oh, that makes sense why, you you know, poor, poor Chris, mm-hmm. you know, but that's obviously it's not going to help you. It's not doing you any good. At what point did you start to say, hey, man, these these kind of the videotape I'm replaying in my head, these stories, these excuses, at what point did you say, man, these aren't serving me anymore? Like, it is what it is. Like, we talked about, we call it making peace with your past. Mm. At what point did you, like, I can't change any of that. Or did you ever, I, I, for me, I don't think you ever really felt sorry for yourself. You no. just You just jumped into action. Yeah. But he mentioned like sometimes I could fall into like it's not is it fair or, or whatever. Oh yeah. You oh, know? you're talking about in your mind the mind yeah, yeah, situation. Yeah. Gotcha. I think it's really, and again, not trying to get all spiritual or anything. I just think the enemy put them thoughts in my head that just to make me feel sorry. You ain't gonna never be nothing. But then it'll wake me up because I got six wonderful kids, dude. That give me no problem. So I did something right. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I think about Matt and then when I coached him. These people trusted me with their children, man. And they had no clue what I was doing. But I made sure they were safe. Them kids, nothing would have ever happened to Matt and them under my watch. You my child for these two hours. Or however long it was, you belong to Chris. And you're going to go home to your parents. I don't care what you do once they pick you up. Do whatever you're going to do. But while you're under my watch. Now, I didn't say that to them. But they knew wherever they went, I had their back. They probably, they probably were more comfortable on the court, the fact that they had me over there, yeah, you know, I didn't play. You know, regardless, these are my children. You know, nobody's going to hurt them. But when I wasn't doing that, in the streets, I had to turn into somebody I didn't like. Mm. I had to be that person that was mean. I had to be that person that may have to shoot you. You had to be that person. Can you but, look at Billy when you say that? <laughs> Not directly into my soul. <laughs> so what? <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> so when uh, you, you're living two lives. Mm-hmm. At this, to- at this time, was there any guilt as you were doing it? No. Because it, it was a necessity. Because you said, you, I was going to justify it, but I'm only doing this till my brother's yeah, out of school. I justified it yeah. real early. So your real life was mm-hmm. probably the straight and narrow. Like, that's yeah. that's who I am. This other side, I, you've got friends over here in your real life, and you've got acquaintances in the street. Because you mentioned, like, I didn't get real close to them. Is that how you would – our mind is amazing at justifying mm-hmm. things. Yeah. I still – to this day, man, don't know how it was so easy for me to live both lives like that. Cause I, but again, I didn't get close to people at all. I'm just getting close to my high school friends. I sat down with one of my high school friends two years ago, and I told him, I said, "Dude, the times we were going to the club, I wasn't broke. I was acting broke sometimes, so y'all wouldn't know what I was really doing." See, his brother does that. And his I brother can't. says, "Man, I, can't. I forgot my wallet, man." He does, he does this routine. Time. Oh no, oh, um, guys! You're not gonna believe it. <laughs> and you know, I guarantee you he'll roll up here in the damn yeah, Tesla yeah, one that's day. That's right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nah, but yeah, man, it was. Where did you did you learn that? Did you did you have to? Because because coming in the environment you had, if you showed any sign of wealth or you're doing well, it's what is it they put? They say you put a bunch of crabs in a bucket. One tries, to, the other crabs are going to pull them down. Is it kind of like that? So it's like, just keep it to myself. Yeah, keep it to myself. I don't want somebody robbing me. I don't yeah, want someone I walk, I walk, getting. I walked everywhere. Didn't get flashy. I didn't buy a fancy car. I just lived a normal life. You thought I was that kid going to play basketball. Oh, that's Chris. He just probably going to play basketball. Hey, I was nice to the elderly people, you know, do things for them. In one incident, preacher coming down the street, preacher coming towards me. The guys are hung in the streets right here. When I'm walking up the street, the pastor comes and says, oh, I don't want to hear what he got to say. So I turn and took that left, and I look at the guy in front of me that I'm really going to talk to and says, move on. Mm. So the pastor never saw what was going on, ever. You know, but yet I can go to him and say, how you doing, sir? Mm. Oh, love to go to church. <laughs> you know. You got any clients? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> And it probably so what, did. what's your what's yeah. clientele like in church <laughs> these days? Medicine <laughs> probably 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 had some clients, no doubt. You know, but everything came natural. Some things I just can't explain 
the stuff that stuff that's natural for me, I can't explain. I can't. It'd be hard for me to explain to anybody. It's just one of them natural gifts that you have. Now, yeah, do I need some fine tuning? Yeah, I understand that. But I know one day that I'm going to sit on the platform and I'm going to be able to tell my story by speaking to people, and it's going to help millions. I'm not going to say thousands or one or two is going to help millions because there's a lot more men out there like myself that are afraid to talk about it and won't mm -hmm. talk about it. A lot of things happen to people in their childhood they're not going to mention at all because they feel like they might be soft or punk or something. No, because that, that's healing. You got to talk about it, man. Oh, yeah. If you don't out. talk about it, man, you're going to sit around and cry all day long, man, for no reason. Being at work, I remember when I got out of prison, man, I sat around and cried for no reason. I can be walking on something, they stopped crying. Mm -hmm. What in the world going on? You I, don't even realize you were that depressed. Am I, it took me a am long, I crazy? What's going on? Yeah. It, it took <laughs> me a long time to, because to, I would just keep everything in, and then your heart just gets heavy. And once it gets real heavy, it just, it just explodes one day. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, which, which there is some benefit. I mean, you don't. You're not well, saying yeah, but, like, but, hey, I'm. You know, you're not saying to be tell like uh, tell everyone your problems because yeah. we, we know guys like that. They're way too open with mm -hmm. how they're feeling at all times. But yeah, you're right. I mean, there's only so long you can keep up that that, that armor. Yeah. You know? Yeah. When you're talking about it, you don't make it about yourself. Yeah. Like you said, some people tell too much. They're making it about themselves. Oh, I'm this now. Nah. I always I'm not, say I'm not defeated. I always say, you know, I have a friend who's got <laughs> not talking about who's got to come him. over and <laughs> and uh and apparently I learned last night. Chris told me my beard was looking a little raggedy. He's like, "Who edges your your beard up?" <laughs> that was signed for you need your beard edged up. <laughs> I'm like, "What does edged up mean, dude?" <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so I had to become more vulnerable. But you got to be. You got to be careful who you become vulnerable with, yeah, you know, because exactly. there's those that want to help you or I always, we always say like, don't tr don't really, you don't really take advice from someone that you don't want to aspire to be like, because mm -hmm. there's a lot you of do, free you, advice out there. You know who the easiest people to talk to about your problems, the ones that understand. That's why it was easy for me to go into a jail or yeah. a prison. It was easy. I get comfortable around my people. Black or white, they done been through what I've been through. If I can reach them, I can reach anybody. Because, you know, once you get in that state of mind, you go in there talking crazy, they're going to let you know. Yeah. And they're yeah. not going to listen to you if you yeah, haven't, they, if you don't have that experience. Yeah, they get up and walk away from me. I'll yeah. get up and tell you, man, stop lying. You know, I took somebody, I ain't going to say his name, but I took an individual with me. He was a pastor. And he was trying to be brave for me. And I said, when we got there, I can see him shaking before we even got to, he was at the prison. I said, you sure you want to do this, man? You can stay in the car. He said, no, I'm, I'm going to be okay. So we get inside, man, and he wouldn't move. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the guys in prison, they're all okay, it's predators. All about, it's about energy, man. Yeah, that's yeah. okay. We can get what we want out of him. They saw that he was scared, so they didn't hear me at all that night. And so when I said, all right, let's go, I looked up, and every last one of them had him surrounded. And he stood in the middle. I said, let me go get this man. <laughs> And I got him. I said, dude, you cannot do that. They sense the fear in you as soon as you walked in there. He said, well, you ain't got to ever worry about me coming back here no more. Was that? No, it wasn't. Oh, it wasn't. I'm like, I'm so popular in here. Why is everyone standing behind me? <laughs> Everybody wants to be my friend. They want to yeah. see me stretch. What's going on? It was. And then I, that's one of the moments I realized this is what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, but I got to get this out to people that haven't been to prison. Are you one of those type of people that will... Even though things seem the worst, you'll find something good in it. Yeah, I got to. Because not, man, geez, what little hair I got left, I'll probably pull it out. Mm. You know, so I, I make the best out of everything, man. It's my kid. That's why, that's why people love to come to me, because I'm going to make a positive out of it, man. Mm. All right, go ahead and get your crowd away. All right, then let's talk. Yeah. This is what we're going to do. Smile about it, bro. As long as that person, that person don't feed you, clothe you, don't do nothing for you, and I tell them, Who's in control if you're mad? That's what you mean. I say, if you're mad, that person's in control. That's too much. Mm -hmm. And you don't want no man to have no control over you. That's too much power for one person to have on me. Because I've, I've I'm, I'm mad. I've heard it put, like, holding a grudge, it's like taking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Mm. And um, and there's, there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. So what I've realized, I'm really good at pouring into other people, you know, to, as seeing the, you know, the superstar in Chris. And oftentimes it can become difficult to 
you know, turn the mirror on myself mm -hmm. and, and find that same inspiration or mm -hmm. see the potential that so many other people. And we, we've talked about that, like, um, buying into your own hype, you know, cause if you're not, you can't give what you don't have. Right. If I want to inspire someone, I've got to be inspiring. Right. If I want to entertain someone, I need to be entertaining. You know, if you want to motivate people, you've got to buy into kind of, yeah. do, do you find that difficult? Because you've always, you said it's, it's never been about me. It's been about my brothers or it's been about my kids. At what point do, is it tough to, you know, be confident in yourself? Does, do you feel cocky? Do you feel yeah. fraudulent? Yeah. Or how, um, I never want to come off cocky and, and it's hard cause some people don't think you cocky. A lot of people may think Max is cocky, you know? We're not, we're not talking about this man here. No, okay. Um, that, that jawline. Yeah, man. yeah. See, that that would come off a little cocky. Did you know that beard beards are makeup for guys? It's makeup for guys. Yeah. Oh, that's what it is. You've probably been accused of being cocky a lot because I mean, if yeah. you're quiet and you're sure of yourself, mm. yeah, it's just confidence, man. Yeah. I mean, I have people. A lot of people tell me that. I say, I'm not. I, I'm get to know me. You know, I give you shirt off my back, man. Shoes off my feet. Just take that time to get to know me. I'm not gonna go out here and, and invite myself and, into your life. I'm not gonna do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I got I got things to worry about. Now, if you want to sit down and talk and we get to know each other, that's with anybody. Then I see if I trust you or not, or we can yeah. keep this friendship going. But I'm not gonna bring you into my life because you got more money or a fancy car, a better house. I'm not gonna do that. Or I look at your house and say, hey, if I look at somebody, I can have that one day. I got to surround myself around people that are doing better. Yeah. Because if I don't, if I stay around people that's broke, and I ain't talking about just financially, spiritually, mentally, I'm going to be broke. Yeah. Average your five yeah. friends. And I, yeah. got, I got to be around people that got it, that's making it. Either, you know, spiritual, whatever it is, that we're moving instead of sitting yeah. still. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to be around nobody that's sitting still. Can't do it. Is that tough to do when you, I mean, you're a father. Mm -hmm. It's like there, there's a show, um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's about the Pope. And the, I remember the Pope said, he's like, to whom does the Pope give his confession? So it's basically like the Pope is the one who's supposed to have all the answers. Everyone mm -hmm. comes to him with their problems. It sounds very similar in your life. But it's like, who do I, where's the Chris that I, in my life? You know, like mm -hmm. who's the, um, I could see that being tough with myself playing in the NFL you have you're surrounded by a lot of people telling you how good you are or how cool you are or like and you start to you buy into your own hype but it's not like a healthy perspective you know it's just yeah you know is that because I mean I, I'm guessing there's a lot of guys just like you and you know being a leader it sounds great but it's a pretty lonely position yeah very lonely because when you when you are that leader again like you said a lot of people are not going to be around you because they see it as you're being cocky or they're afraid that you're going to say something that they need to hear. Most people just want you to tell them what they want to hear so they can feel good about themselves. I'm going to tell you right quick <laughs> what you need to hear regardless if it hurts your feelings or I not. Think, I think everyone's kind of look. I don't want to hear that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Some people don't want to hear it, That's man. one of those things keep yourself, man. Yeah. That's a, I got to have people around me like that, though. Because if you can't tell me what I need to hear, if it hurt my feelings or not, you're not my friend. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I need that. So yeah. I'm saying this to y'all now. If you ever hear, see, or do, you know, if I'm doing something, just say, hey, Chris, that, that ain't cool, man. Do it this way. We, act, You know, we, you, if you don't do that, guess what? I'm going to keep doing it because I think it's right. Yeah. We're going to be like, Chris, can I ask your permission? To can I ask your you permission <laughs> to tell you <laughs> that you're doing that wrong? To give you a helpful suggestion? <laughs> nah. You know so what? talk about, um, you know, there is... We, we talk about before how your best position to help your your previous self, right? Like yeah. your best your best position it's five years ago, or you know whatever it is. So I'm I I could immediately start something right now helping young dads, right? Mm -hmm. Because I'm I've got that built in credibility. I've done it, you know, but I'm still close enough to it to where I can feel the struggle or feel that anxiety, that angst of like shit. I have a kid. What do I do now? You know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only natural for you. You you are maybe talk about your um, being locked up. Um, how much time did you do? Altogether seven. Altogether, because um, I went twice. Mm. You know, um, the first time, it was basically kind of paid off. You know, because you had, I had a lot of money, and they said, "Well, you you're gonna just have to be in the system." You know, you got to go to prison. So I went for two you know two weeks, 
and I violated, and so I ended up doing the time. Violated, what does that mean? Yeah, I got in trouble. I was out, didn't do my probation, wasn't in the house at the right time or something like that. Didn't end, You're on a short leash. When yeah, you out, very yeah. short leash. And the second time, that was the most time. So I was like, mm, what am I going to do here? I'm done. I can't That's when it clicked. Yeah, yeah. I was like, nah, this, these people ain't playing with me, you know. You, you saw this. This was a turning point. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. this is either going to be the rest of my life, or I need it. I yeah. better. Because yeah, you know, as a as a black man, we want to blame You're black. Not, yeah. Shh. Don't tell nobody. We don't yeah. see. We don't see color. Matt. Do you see color? <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> I saw. You know, that my excuses was taken away from me because mm. a lot of blacks want to blame it on the other race. You know, but God made sure that He put a a woman, a black woman, as the judge in front of me. And he and and I and it, I fired my lawyer right there. Moved where I said, you know what, ma'am, y'all already know what y'all gonna do with me. Because they've been stringing you along yeah, at that point. String right? me along for six months, fifteen hundred dollars here, fifteen. I said, nah, I'm done. Mm. And she looks at me and, all right, Mr. Bryant, we're gonna give you five years. How I'm old like, are you? hold up now. I don't get no probation. My first time getting caught doing this. Now I got a charge, but that wasn't drugs. That was gun. It's, it's a difference here. Mm. Nah. That's okay, man. Can you imagine five years? How old were you when this happened? When it happened, I got the charge when I was 23. Holy crap. And I think. Matt, I was married for 20 years. Oh, man. Yeah, that's. uh... (laughs) But so if they gave you five years and you're sitting here like, oh, shit, this is real. This ain't two weeks. No. I I mean, it's no time, though. You look at that five and go, man, it's a lot of time. Then when you get in there, it's it's, guy, it goes, guys already been in there 30. And you don't want to talk about that little five you got. That's a no-no. Mm. So they like, yeah, man, I got five. And they look at you like, for real, dude? Like, okay, you're going to be our yeah, guy to carry yeah, out stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go yeah. get me some milk. Yeah. yeah. Or Take no, this like, basket. Go wash put, my clothes. Put in some work or something. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, they, 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 the old guys will come in there and coach you, dude. Don't talk about that. Yeah. That's, some guys already did 30. Shh. Okay. What what did you um? But you shared something interesting with the judge. Oh, the judge. When I told her, I said I would never do that again. I, you know, and so which, I get out. She's probably heard a million yeah, times. Heard a million yeah. times. So I get out, and I actually get a job at the county. You, that don't happen with a guy who got two felons. Yes. And I got I actually got the keys to the jobs. And this is when another incident where I knew that I was supposed to get back through speaking, hmm. not by doing anything by just speaking. So I'm in the jail, and I said, I'm not preaching to nobody. God said, I ain't want you to preach. I got enough preachers. Preaching is foolishness. Mm. I need to go in there and talk to these guys for real. And I'm like, I ain't doing that. So I'm in the jail fixing something. And one of the guys, man, that Chris Brown said, yeah, what's up? Guess what I end up doing? I end up ministering to him. And I said, God, you slick. He's so, <laughs> so I get out one day, that, that black judge was there. This is after years. I, I got out of prison, now, and I seen her and walked up on her. And she got good. I said, no, ma'am, I ain't, you know. She said, you don't remember me, but a few years ago, you gave me some time, and I told you I would never go back to prison. And she looks, I said, I know you don't remember, but ma'am, I appreciate you for doing that. And she needed to hear that. I can see it in her face. Like, when I said it, you can see this girl. Like, she made a difference. Because, so you know, you God do things not on our time but on his. And at that moment, she needed to hear that because she probably ready to quit. Like, I ain't doing no good for the kids. But here come a grown man come back years later to say, hey, I appreciate you for locking me up, giving me that time. Because if you would have gave me probation, I would have probably got right back out there. Now I got to sell some more drugs because y'all don't took so much from me. Mm. So once, you know, once the police looking at you like that, they ain't going to stop looking. So I probably would have had a charge on top of a charge. And we probably, I would have probably got 20 yeah. or 30 years. Mm. So I appreciate her doing that. Everything in my life has caused me to be who I am today. Wow. So when you when you look back at that time, and if you look at the criminal justice system, do you see a lot of people that come out because we're mm. we're targeted by the media saying that when people go in, they come out and they just go back to their normal. Mm. Or that you like haven't coming out rehabilitated or, or institutionalized yeah, or yeah. But what does the system need to do to help? Young men like yourself come out and do the right thing, change their life around. Do, are, are they doing enough in the prison systems, or is it even their job to do that? Yeah, because I'm gonna say it sounded like a light bulb went off in your own head. Yeah. Like it didn't matter what you could have been in solitary for five years. And you've yeah. been like, I'm it's, done with it's this. It's up to the individual. 
I mean, they don't do enough here in North Carolina, but in other bigger states, they starting to, they putting school back in, and that helps. I mean, it really does. It gives them something else to think about instead of, um, I got to go try to steal from him. I'm gonna do this instead of hustling. Now you focusing on homework. That's good, but are you really gonna be able to use that when you get out? Because you got that charge, you know, yeah. you still gonna give me a job? Yeah, I got a degree in this and business, but where am I working with it? You get out and you see the guy cutting grass. Mm-hmm. You know, he don't want to be cutting grass for somebody else. I got a business degree. You got guys in there that got law degrees. They ain't going to never be able to use them because mm-hmm. the system says you can't. You know what I'm saying? Even after 10 years, I wasn't even allowed to vote for 10 years after I got out. They had to wait 10 years. Huh. So, but you got people out here that do stuff that's never been in prison. Yeah. But been in trouble because they didn't get locked up. They they get to have they got more freedom than you do. Mm-hmm. You just didn't you did the same thing. You just didn't get locked up behind the bars. Yeah. So now this man out here get to vote on something to change our world. When he's over here messing with somebody's kids. Yeah. You know. I mean, sin is sin, wrong is wrong, right is right. But I just think some things we need to change. Like, hey, this is a human being, and yes, he can help with this. Yes, he did wrong, but it's all right for him to have an opinion on certain things. Because some people do stuff just they ain't got caught, man. Does it does it feel like, man, I can't even really participate in society now? Yeah, it, it does. It's still but, a little bit to this day feels like that because of somebody going to bring that up. Somebody just mess it up. It can be 10 people in the room that go, I'm, he look familiar. Matt, do you know that he used to? Didn't you used to coach Matt Dodge? Oh, my they God. Start, they, they were <laughs> spending – but by, I think you're doing the wise thing by, one, coming on here and, and talking about it, not saying just for our show in general, but if you take the ammunition away from people, they can't fire at you. Mm-mm. So if you fess up, yeah, you know, I spent seven years mm-hmm. in prison. Yeah, can't do nothing. What is it? Mm-hmm. You going to judge me? There's only one judgment that I need. Yeah, they can't do a thing with you, man. Yeah. Once you get, get it out. Once you get it, I once think you they take upset the ammo, them more than anything. They got, I can't talk about them. God, mm-hmm. doing it. And the reality is most people, we're so in our own heads, you know, that I think because I thought, because I you know, played in the NFL, had a pretty traumatic, you know, game that was, it's got millions of views on YouTube. I was on the, I'm on like a bunch of highlight reels of like, oops, you know, like yeah. shit goes wrong. And uh, we talked about that on Be Careful What You Get Famous For. But I'd walk around, it would be a lot more in my head, like everyone in here, they're thinking about that play. The reality is they don't even know who I am. You know, Mm -hmm. it's, um, so I had to get over that myself, but really you got to own it, you know, make peace with your past. Because if you look at your, say, I'm a felon, I can't get a job. Even if you never say that, it's going to communicate. And they're like, well, if I want to, I want to hire him. I think he's a great guy, but I can see that's holding him back. Maybe he's still Mm bubbling. Nah, we're just not even, you know, too much liability. It's no, it's. It's not. The, it's not the felony that you're not getting the job. You think about it. You get in there, and these people are looking at your record, and they're going, "Did you do all this?" It's like, "Yes, I did." Okay, we're not going to better get you hired nowhere. Come back the next day, fill out another application. Come back the next day, fill out. Well, you already filled that one. No, you probably threw that in the trash. Mm. I fill out another one, and to the point where the people go, "Well, he's serious," and that's all they're looking for. They can care less about what you've done. They want to see if you're going to really come back or you just come here to have me sign a piece of paper off sent so you can show to your probation officer that you went and tried to look for a job when mm-hmm. you really don't want to work. Mm-hmm. Keep going back. It's not the felony. Because of the, having that felony, that's another excuse that's really good. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's why I can't find work. You know, you hear that's that. That's why I got to go back selling drugs. How say, many mm-hmm. times do we hear that, guys who go back in and they ask them why? They're like, well, who's going to hire a felon? If I had to do that. You know, it, it's it's a, it's a good excuse. You look at it, you're like, oh shit, that kind of makes sense. I, yeah, I, yeah, well, I enjoy, guess. But enjoy your jail time. You know, it's yeah. like it, the system I mean, doesn't it, care. It, it got to the point where I would get interviews and I wouldn't put it on my paper, and I would just put it on the paper. Look, I've been in trouble. Let me speak to you in person about that. Yeah. Because I want nobody to make an assumption about me without seeing me. So when I get there and I talk to them, they're like, okay. Like, let's address the elephant in the room. Yeah. yeah, this is what I've done, but that's not me no more. Yeah. And I want them to see it that I'm serious, and I'm gonna get the job every time. Yeah, you know, cause they, they, they of course, you got a scapegoat now. Oh, we can blame Chris, but if something go wrong, but <laughs> but um, sticky fingers. <laughs> Talk about the ministry stuff you've got going on. Yeah, where do you want to direct? Yeah, your what's, purpose now? What's next? My purpose is 
It's simple. I would love to work with kids from like 12 to 18. We want to get to the kids before they get to prison or in jail. Not that you can't reach them afterwards, but it's kind of hard once you know they get there. These parents know that their kids are doing stuff they got no business doing. I'm here. I'm going to say things to them that you won't say to them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not afraid to talk to them a certain way. Because they need to realize that, man, this is can destroy you. This is not cool. What's that show, Scared Straight? Yeah. Isn't there, when they're showing yeah, like yeah. that, they would take the... Uh, yeah. And it, it, it ain't, maybe not that intense. Not, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to scare them, but this stuff is real. I eat your face! Yeah, like, okay, yeah, dude. Okay. What's your mama's name? <laughs> That's right. What can I do? Yeah. Big goal is to um, have a building. More like... Um, I don't want them to feel like they're in jail if they come to this place, you know? Somewhere they can come and just chill after school or something. Somebody can sit down and actually relate to them and listen to them. Yeah, we can, nothing wrong with the Boys and Girls Club. That, that, that's all fine. But them places not going to have somebody like myself there to actually talk to them kids about stuff that they really need to talk about. Like right. a counselor type. Yeah. Just let them come in and sit back and just feel free. Let them do it at their own time. Don't force them. Mm. But you know that they're there and they're not getting in trouble. Because yeah. there will be rules. Right. You know, and they get to go home. There's no staying overnight. There's no, hey, you come at your own. If you really want this, you'll come back tomorrow. Yeah. You give that kid that opportunity. Because kids, you know, basically, I believe kids really want to be disciplined. You ain't got to hit your kids, man. They show them that you care. Get, you know, when a kid do something, say, hey, that was stupid. That was wrong. Don't go, oh, he's just three. No. That, now he's 15. Now you can't tell you nothing to him because you can't. Oh, he's just a baby. I yeah. had a joke of 30 years old, still eating out your fridge, ain't got no job. Yeah, there's a lot of boys that can shave, man. It's um, Yeah, they strive for discipline and um, consistency, too. Oh, yeah. Just listen. My look, my girls, man, all, all they want daddy to do is listen. Yeah. And they can talk. Women can talk. Y'all know this. But if I don't listen to them, guess what? Somebody in them streets will. Yeah. So daddy make sure, care what they're talking about, yeah. I'm there. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm, I hear you, babe. Yeah. And they don't want to hear, they don't, they don't need my opinion. Appreciate you listening, Dad. Thank you for that. So this center, helping the youth, but you, I know you also have um, a passion of getting up on stage, speaking. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've all done public speaking. It's yeah. something that's it's terrifying for most people. I think they, they said it's the number one fear in America is public mm -hmm. speaking. Number two, number two is, is death, death, which means wow. at a funeral, people are more comfortable in the, in the casket than they are yeah. giving the eulogy. So never, it is a superpower to be... Never been afraid to be get in front of people. Never, even with preaching, man. I just it just feels natural. Who, now, who, what crowd would you be afraid to get in front of? Like, would you feel like we're all about stretching our comfort zone, be, becoming comfortable, being uncomfortable, that yeah. kind of stuff? Because that's where the growth is going to happen. There's no group that I wouldn't get in front of. Yeah, and then and let them ask questions or don't ask questions. I'm not afraid of yeah. anything that's been asked of me or asked to do. I'm either going to say got, yes or no. You got nothing to hide, yeah. No, nothing to hide. You, this is what it is. Yeah. I mean, you you love it or hate it. Yeah. But I guarantee you, you will respect me and appreciate me, regardless what I say to you. Yeah. You know, so eventually down the road, man, I appreciate him. I was mad when he first said it, but, man, it makes sense now that I sit back and it made a lot of sense. A tough. It was a tough yeah. pill to swallow, but I'm glad yeah. it did. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, I, I love it, man, because even with... If it's, it's in marriage, kids, uh, friends, your mom, your parents. I mean, your parents. You got to tell them too sometimes. That's hard because they the parent. And mm -hmm. you got to look at them and say, Mom, that was kind of mean there. That we, was wrong. We, we talked about that. It's a weird point in life when you realize <laughs> your parents aren't like God. Yes. They're, mm -hmm. they're human. They're flawed humans just like me. That was a that's an eye opener. Yeah. Because yeah, they, they are it forever. Yeah, when you're young, you're like, oh, wow. And then you get older. You've been doing that all our lives. Yeah. That's kind of, how do we tell them? I ain't telling them. <laughs> you know, you, you're scared of, I ain't doing it. You do it. We flipping for co coin. Up. That's right. Ah, mom. Uh, so my parents, my parents would enable my brothers and my sister because they have bad drug problems. Mm -hmm. You know, in and out, my sister was in and out of jail multiple times. And they would just, wouldn't let them leave that. But yeah, they could just stay here. My parents had this big house and stuff. They were living there, and they would always complain to me. They're just, I'm so tired of taking care of them. 
I said, well, don't. Yeah. Don't take care of them. Let them go. And my mom would say, when, I, when my kids were younger, well, wait till your kids are older. You'll see it's different. Oh, you are. And, Did we have this same and, conversation? And now, like, I'll talk to my mom, and she was like, yeah, but I was like, no, my daughter's 26. They're older now. We can't have this conversation. You've been doing the same thing. It's called insanity. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's kind of weird to ha- have that talk to your parents. You know, like, yeah, it, like get being almost the parent figure to them. Eat your Jello and go away. Yes. <laughs> I, I found it really. Jeopardy's on at seven. That's right. Was, I was talking to a gentleman the other day, and I said, "What the, what did this spell?" He said, "What's that?" I said, "What well, N O." He said, "No." I said, "See how easy it is to say that." Mm. Tell him no, and mean it. I don't care if they're two years old. No. I mean it. Walk away. Yeah. You got to start that thing. Then your child will gain that respect. I can't go to dad. He going to say no. I need love. That hurts, that, more, that hurts more than you ever picking, hitting them or something. No. I ain't going to. Mom, can I? Mm-mm. And she got to be on your team. Yeah. And she can't be doing what you say no. And then you, he, he see him coming up the hole with a lot of pop yeah. in his mouth after you don't say no. You were talking about in prison how they'll detect weakness. Children yeah. the same way. Oh, they're yeah. Like, okay, I can pit. Uh, all right, that's who I'm going to try to exploit to get what I want. Mm-hmm. You know, I can I, go I, to mama. Man, the kids are smart, man. Yeah. Mama, okay, I'm going to ask dad. He said no, that's all right. He's going to leave. Look, mm-hmm. hey, mom, can I get that piece of candy? Oh, go ahead, baby. And he come up the hallway basically picking on you like, ah. Mm-hmm. It's a game, man. Like, when I was going through my divorce, my son was like a shark in water and bloody water. He's like, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, two Christmases. <laughs> 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 you, that piece of candy can turn into drugs. Yeah, later on in life, because he know he can go to mama or daddy. Oh, because life's gonna slap yeah. you in the face I, I, at yeah. some point. If, yeah. if you've I, never I, heard no before, it's gonna be. Yeah, a I, I had an incident. A woman called me, and my number's out there. And she calls. She said, I'm, "I was told that you can um, put your name on my son's bond." You know, he, all he has to do is report to you every day because we don't have the money to get him out. I said, well, I'd be down there. I went down to the, you know, the jail about 2 o'clock in the morning. And I see the young man, and I'm talking to him. I said, now, tomorrow you need to call me. I'm going to leave you alone right now because your mom is here with you. But tomorrow you need to call me. If you don't call me every day, hmm. I will take my name off your bond, and you'll be locked back up, right? Next day come by. Man, I'm tired. That's okay. Next day. His mama calls me, making excuses for him. I said, ma'am, I'm taking my name off somebody. And, oh, she whipped the crying. I said, no, this is not a game for me. And if he don't show up in court, I get in trouble. Right. I'm not doing that. You can't help somebody that don't want to help yeah. themselves. Yeah. So I get in jail about two weeks later, and I see somebody trying to hide from me. The young man's back in jail. So I put him on blast. I said, come here, dude. He came to me. I said, y'all, guess what? I got this joker out on bond, and all he had to do was call me each day, and now he's back at old. And I looked at that older guys in there. I just, just be hard on them. Don't put your hands on them. Just be hard on them. That boy, he ain't been back to jail because he thought it was a joke. Mm-hmm. He looked at me like, how this black man got all this power? He telling them jokers what to do. I don't have no power. I just got a lot of respect because they already seen me in here. So I use that. Mm-hmm. I, can get, I ain't got to be in there with you to get guys to do stuff for me. And then we, but I got to use that in a positive way. That's when my leadership came. I knew it was leadership. Like the, somebody asked me to fight or in the streets. Now I know when I get around me and I can say, hey, dude. Because they feel it. I ain't, they ain't got to see me one time. These they, old dudes didn't have to say, hey, Chris, is it okay to be hard on the brother? <laughs> <laughs> we put our hands on him. I put my hands on him, but it's to be hard. Can I use a stern tone? Yeah. It, 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 it feels good that people have that much respect for you and they in jail. It's like when I come in there, they free for that one hour. Mm. Even though they still locked up when I'm talking to them, I'm not preaching at them. We're just talking. We're just having a good time. I pick on the man that, yeah, man, I'm going to have me a stick, T-bone. Mm. Oh, my fault. Y'all don't get that, do you? <laughs> you know, but, you know, I just let them know, man, hey, hey, man, I've done it. You can do it, man. Right. This feels good to be free, for real. Because even though when you're out of jail, man, you still feel locked up. So you want to do more prison tours as well? Nah. Or is I that just, that's that's something that, Hey, I can, just I can do that any type product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Like I said, I don't want to feel like that's where I'm, people think I'm starting to get comfortable. I'm going to wait till you get to prison to talk to you. No, I don't mind doing that. 
but I don't, I don't want to get to that point. I want to be able to train people to do that. Yeah. So many kids to go in there with me when they get 18. Just come sit with me. Don't let, let them see it before they get locked up. Like, okay, when they, when they, like, when you felt that that cage hit, <laughs> that's a feeling, buddy. That's for real. Yeah. That's for real. Then you go through another. You got to get searched. I turned into Little Spoon real quick. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, I had, you got the prison I go through. You got the one, two, three, four doors before you even get in there. I just start doing push ups and pull ups. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta own this yard. <laughs> Like, we're, we're still in the parking lot, man. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm like, dude, I've watched a lot of movies. <laughs> yeah. It is it's crazy, man. It's it's amazing how the life we live that we can turn it into what we're doing now. These it's just so positive, man. What y'all doing and I appreciate y'all even allowing me to come up here and speak because I don't I have a platform, but that platform is small compared to what we're doing now. Because I, I only get to go to the prison, local prisons and, and the local jails. And not too many people know about me. Because lately, in the last few years, I've kind of... You're kind of the best kept secret, man. Yeah. Like, like honestly. But it, it is something we've we've learned. Like, you just got to put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. You have to tell people what you told them. Tell them again. Keep telling them. And, you know, push into the space. Because yeah. it is an arms race for attention. You know, that's the currency now. And if you have a message that's... You know, it's like if you want to be in the news, you have to do something newsworthy, right? If you want to, people want to go viral, you have to have a video or a message or something Worth. that it doesn't matter what technique or strategy, it has to get heard. Oh, know? yeah. Because still, or get word of mouth is the same online as it is offline. But I just think with your message and your your backstory and, you know, kind of the grit you have and the ambitions that you have with a tie it to a little bit of strategy. Um, I think it would go a long, yeah. long way. I mean, there's a lot of content creators that would, they're, they're dying to figure out how to make their boring lives interesting, mm -hmm. you know, but y you have a, have lived m probably many lives, you know, and up to this point, you might be like, man, this is bullshit. Like this is, I wish I had, this, or I, what if it was different? What if my dad was there? What if I wasn't, you know what I mean? We play mm -hmm. that what if game. But, man, you can actually kind of make peace with that past and then see, like, oh, shit, this is actually an advantage. Mm -hmm. You know, getting on an airplane is really uncomfortable for Shaq, but it's also being seven foot's got a lot of advantages, too. Yeah. So there there are there are two sides to it, man. So we're, we're pumped you came in. And yeah, I appreciate it. We got some big plans for the future. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to do whatever we have to do or what we can do to help. I yeah. appreciate that. Get you, get you to the yeah, Get you level. buy into your own hype, brother. Oh, yeah. Well, man, I'm there. do you got, um, do you want to, if you want to look directly into that, you can tell people kind of where to find you. If you want to speak directly to anyone, um, you know, you're going to be seeing a lot more of this guy. Oh, well, basically you can reach me at, um, 252-269-1817. And I want to say to every individual, every young man out there, and it's going to make sense to you if you're listening to me, a woman taught me how to be quiet. And what I mean by that, you know, we like we were talking earlier about stuff builds up. And that woman, because she had to raise three men by herself, didn't know how to raise us. So she was, you know, yelling this, that, and it taught us how to be quiet because we was afraid and didn't have respect. So now when we carry that quietness into a relationship, the woman that you're with, you notice that you end up marrying your mother. Because mm -hmm. that's what you thought love was. So now you got the same woman acting just like your mother. And because you won't say nothing because she taught you how to be quiet, you allow it to keep happening over and over in your life until you open your mouth yep. and forgive yourself and move on. And break the cycle, You, you can continue to live that life. Break the cycle. That's powerful. Good stuff. Chris, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate you. I appreciate yeah, you. Thank you so Thanks. much for coming in. Awesome. Guys, do us a big favor. Go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. <laughs> As we'll see you on the next video. Peace.